Hi there, boys and girls. It's me, Miss Booksy, here at Cool School. Let's watch all my favorite stories, Ask Miss Booksies, and Miss Booksy interviews from this year. Comment below with what story you want me to read next. Hi, boys and girls. Miss Booksy here. Oh, hi. Elmo's here, too. We're here with a brand new chapter series for Storytime at Cool School. Excuse me, Storytime at Cool School and Sesame Street. Yeah. Oh, Miss Booksy and Elmo are having a play date. Oh, we're going to read a book. Hey, Miss Booksy? Yes, Elmo? Uh, what book are we going to read? <gasps> we're reading Jack and the Beanstalk. Are you ready? Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Elmo loves Jack and the Beanstalk. <laughs> oh, can Elmo start? Of course. Okay. <clears throat> Once upon a time. Yeah, well, great job. You read that all by yourself? Oh, oh Elmo can't read yet, Miss Booksy. Oh, but <laughs> Elmo knows that most books start with Once Upon a Time. <laughs> That's right, Elmo. <laughs> okay, here we go. Okay. Once upon a time, there was a girl named Jack. My full name is Jacqueline Claire Rachel Cumberland Jones. <laughs> but my friends call me Jack, so that means you can call me Jack. <laughs> Jack lived in a nice little village called Smallstown. Hi, Mr. Smith. Hi, Jack. Hi, Miss Garcia. Hola, Jack. Nice weather, huh, old man McDonald? Sure is. What are you up to today, Jack? I'm on my way to the flea market. I've been saving up all my money, and now I'm going to buy something super duper awesome. Well, that sounds exciting. Have fun. See ya. So Jack <laughs> skipped on towards the flea market. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What's a flea market? Oh, is that a market where fleas shop? Oh, or is that where you buy fleas? <laughs> no, not real fleas. Oh. A flea market is a place where you can buy all sorts of things, like toys, uh -huh. musical instruments, oh. clothes, doodads, whatchamacallits, <laughs> pretty much anything you can think of. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, okay, back to the story. <laughs> but before Jack made it to the flea market, she saw this. <gasps> Mr. Amazing's Magic Emporium? Hello there! Welcome to Mr. Amazing's Magic Emporium! Your source for all your magic needs! I'm Mr. Amazing! Hi! I've never seen you in town before. You must be new. Welcome! I'm Jack. Thank you very much, Jack! Now what can I get you? A magic wand? Abracadabra! <laughs> Or how about an invisibility cloak? Can't see me, can ya? I'm invisible. Or how about a magic classic? A bunny in a hat. Cute, how much? How much you got? My life savings. Interesting, how much are we talking? Hundreds, thousands, <gasps> millions? Three dollars. Oh, well, I'm afraid I can't help you. You can't? Nope. Magic costs a lot of money. I'm sorry. Well, thanks anyway. Hold on. I do have these magic beans for sale. Magic beans? What do they do? Give you superpowers? Like super strength? Or super speed? Or super x-ray vision? Yeah, sure, kid. And with that, Mr. Amazing took Jack's three dollars, gave her the beans, shuttered his car, and drove away! Well, that was odd, but never mind that. Now I have these magic beans. I better go home and put them somewhere safe. Back at home, Jack told her brother about the magic beans. There's no such thing as magic beans. Uh-huh, yes there are. I have some right here. Those are plain old lima beans. Nuh-uh. They're magic. Mr. Amazing said so. Yeah, might as well toss those out the window. It's not true that those beans are magic. Wait, Miss Booksy, wait! Did Mr. Amazing trick Jack? Boy, it's not very kind to trick somebody, is it? No, it's not. But maybe Mr. Amazing was telling the truth. Let's keep reading and we'll see. Yeah, okay. Oh, and maybe the magic beans are real. Oh, okay, back to the story. Jack thought her brother was probably right. She was so disappointed. Three dollars, her entire life savings, all gone. But Jack did what her brother said and tossed the beans out her window. <sighs> that night, as Jack slept, something very curious, some might even say magical, happened. One of the beans sprouted into a beanstalk. Okay, that part isn't that magical, but what happened next certainly is. The beanstalk grew up and up, way up into the sky, higher than any tree, straight up into the clouds. Miss Booksy, look! The beanstalk is growing sideways into Jack's window. 
Huh? Oh wow, oh wow, oh wow, oh wow, oh wow. Okay, this definitely seems like magic, right? Look, brother, a magic beanstalk. Uh, what? A beanstalk. Beans talk? What do they talk about? Oh, never mind. Gee, I wonder how far up it goes. Oh, there's only one way to find out. Jack decided she would just have to climb up to the top of the beanstalk. Snacks, gotta have energy to climb. <laughs> oh, some sunglasses because I don't know how high this beanstalk goes. The sun's probably much brighter up there. Plus, these make me look cool. And of course, my favorite book. You can't travel without some really good reading material. It's go time. Jack began her climb up the beanstalk. Be careful, Jack. She climbed and climbed and climbed until finally she made it to the top. Wow. I'm all the way above the clouds. I knew those magic beans were real. <laughs> Jack was so happy that she did her happy dance. Um, did I get smaller or is everything here way bigger? <laughs> I still feel my same size. Hmm, my clothes still fit. I better go exploring to see what this is all about. <laughs> Jack wandered around and sure enough, everything was giant. There was a giant house with a giant door and a giant welcome mat. <laughs> <sighs> oh, hey, there's a giant picnic basket and giant cookies. <laughs> I'll just take one teensy little bite. Wait a second. If all this stuff here is giant, then whoever lives here must be an actual giant. Oh, Miss Booksy, this could be Elmo's play. Elmo could play the giant. Good idea. <laughs> okay, where were we? Oh, here we go. All of a sudden, everything around started to shake. Uh, whoa. was so happy about a maybe new best friend that he did his yeah, happy baby. dance. Woo -hoo. <sighs> Phew, that was close, but I'm home now. And, oh no, I left my backpack up there. My most favorite is favorite book in the world is in there. Oh, I guess I'll have to go back. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Miss Brooksy, what'd you do that for? Why'd you go? <laughs> well, that's just the sound I make sometimes when we end a chapter right when something exciting is about to happen. <laughs> wait, wait, Elmo thought that the giant looked really friendly. Yeah, I think you might be right, Elmo. He kind of reminds me of someone. Hmm, who is it? It's Elmo. <laughs> really? I was thinking it was Big Bird. <laughs> no, it's Elmo. <laughs> well, now I definitely can't wait to read chapter three. Yeah, boy, thinking about chapter three makes Elmo want to do his happy dance. Oh, yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> Hit like if you love doing your happy dance too. Yeah. <laughs> to hear the rest of the story, head over to Sesame Street's YouTube channel where we'll be reading the rest of Jack and the Beanstalk and make sure you subscribe! Make sure you subscribe! <laughs> Bye! Bye everybody! <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Briar Rose aka Sleeping Beauty. As you might guess, my beauty sleep is very important to me. So let me share with you my routine before I settle down for a good night's sleep or in my case, a good 100 years sleep. <laughs> Here is my Sleeping Beauty night routine. First, I put on my PJs. Ooh, Chet, <laughs> Rose, get it, Briar Rose. <laughs> next up, I pick out an outfit for the next day. Or, you know, for whenever the spell is finally broken by a nice prince and I wake up. Mm. Let's see, I'll need something classic that still will be in style in a hundred years from now. Preferably a look that says, true love, or I woke up like this. <gasps> That's perfect. 
baked. Then I like to make a to-do list for after I wake up. Hmm, if I'm asleep for 100 years, then there's a lot I'm gonna need to do. Get a haircut. If my hair grows about five inches each year, then after 100 years, that would be 500 inches? Huh, that's almost as long as a school bus. Oh, and I'll probably be starving, so I better eat a good breakfast. And I'll need to catch up on all my chores. Whose even are all of these? I thought the whole castle was asleep. Sorry. Okay, after I make my to-do list, I like to listen to some nice, relaxing music. The fairies are the best at singing lullabies. And sometimes they'll read me a story. A fairy tale, of course. Once upon a time, there was a girl named Cinderella. Ooh, I love this one. <laughs> Finally, if I'm having trouble getting to sleep, sometimes I just take a little walk to clear my head. Maybe a nice stroll through the garden. Then, over to the tower where the evil fairy, disguised as a nice old spinster, will curse me into a deep sleep. <gasps> I guess it would be more convenient if she could just curse me in my bedroom, but the good fairies will deliver me to my bed, so it's all good. And that's how I, Sleeping Beauty, get ready for bed. Good night. <laughs> oh, I almost forgot the most important thing. If you're gonna go to sleep for like 100 years, you better use the bathroom first. <laughs> Pro tip. Very good advice. And now let's watch Sleeping Beauty from beginning to end. Once upon a time in an enchanted land far, far away, there lived a king and a queen. One day, after many, many years of hoping for a baby, the king and queen had a little baby girl, a princess named Briar Rose. Everyone in the land was so excited about the new baby princess, especially the fairies. You see, fairies love babies. So the fairies all got together to plan a party to celebrate little Briar Rose. Fairies also love parties. <laughs> Ooh, I love the streamers, Twinkles. Thanks, boss. And Sparkle, those cupcakes look scrumptious. Buttercup, how is the music coming? Great, I've almost got the speakers set up. Speakers work. Excellent. Everything was shaping up for a wonderful party. Well, all except for one teeny tiny detail that everyone overlooked. No one had invited Grimsley. Grimsley was not like the other fairies. The other fairies liked to flit and flutter about, singing sweet songs and sprinkling pixie glitter on everything. And Grimsley, well, Grimsley liked to do sort of mischievous things like gluing fairies' wings together. We're stuck! And filling the pixie glitter jars with dirt. And she absolutely loved to put curses on the other fairies. Curse you! I turn you into a frog! Hey! Grimsley just wasn't very nice. Maybe that's why it never occurred to any of the other fairies to invite her. Anyway, the party started out like any other fairy party. It was lots of fun and everyone was happy until... What? I just came to bring a present for the baby. Oh, how lovely, thank you. The king and queen opened Grimsley's present, but they were confused. What is this, a spindle? Briar Rose is far too young to play with a spindle. See kids, a spindle is a sharp, pointy thing used to make yarn. So not exactly a good gift for a baby. But then Grimsley said, You didn't read the card. It explains the curse. This is gibberish. It says here that when Briar Rose turns 16, she'll prick her finger on a spindle and fall into a hundred years sleep. The only thing that will wake her is true love. And good luck with that. Hard to find love when you're napping. What did she say? She just put a curse on Briar Rose. A purse? A curse. Oh no, curses are bad. That's right kids, curses are bad, especially when they're from an angry fairy. Grimsley flew away, but the damage was done. Everyone was majorly bummed out. The next day, the king and queen banned Grimsley from the kingdom and ordered that all spindles be thrown away. This is a no spindle zone, no spindles. And it remained a no spindle zone for exactly 16 years. 
And then one day, a nearly grown-up Briar Rose went exploring around the castle. <laughs> what you doing? I'm spinning. <laughs> really? This is how I spin. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, <laughs> makes me dizzy though. <laughs> I'm spinning yarn. Then I'll make you a pretty dress. Oh, that's so nice of you. Hey, I've never seen you around here before. Are you new? I've been around for years, but no one visits me much. Oh, well, now that I know you're here, I'll come and visit you every day. <laughs> hey, could I try? <sighs> oh, I poked myself. Uh, it's not too bad though. It only hurts a little bit. Too bad. She was actually kind of sweet. Oh well. Sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. Briar Rose had fallen into a deep sleep. Oh no, just like the curse said she would. When she didn't show up for dinner, the king and queen began to worry. Everyone went looking for her. Briar Rose! Briar Rose, where are you? When they found her sleeping, the spindle beside her, they all knew that Grimsley was to blame. The king and queen were so upset, but Grand Fairy, the oldest and wisest of all the fairies, had an idea. I can cast a spell that will make everyone in the castle fall asleep and only wake when the princess wakes. Then it will be as if no time has passed at all. The king and queen agreed to it. Grand Fairy summoned all the magic she could, and with a wave of her fairy wand, everyone fell asleep. Yep, still sleeping. And they slept, and slept, and slept. Nothing could wake them up. Over the years, the trees grew around the castle like a jungle, and eventually people kind of just forgot that it had ever even existed. But inside the castle, Briar Rose looked exactly as she did the day she fell asleep. Luckily, Grimsley hadn't cursed her dreams, and Briar Rose had plenty of sweet dreams. One time, she dreamed she lived in a land of puppies. Just puppies everywhere for as far as the eye could see. Puppies! <laughs> and then another time, the puppies were replaced by kittens. <gasps> kittens! <laughs> Actually, there were lots of dreams like that. Puppies, kittens, ponies, unicorns, hamsters, unicorn hamsters. Pretty much anything cute slash awesome and Briar Rose dreamt about it. But Briar Rose's favorite dream was the one with the prince. Ah, the prince. The prince dream always started the same. Briar Rose would wake up bright and early. <sighs> then I would walk into the garden where all the birds and woodland creatures would come out to greet me. Hi, Briar Rose. Briar Rose is here. We love you, Briar Rose. I would do the usual dream stuff, like dance around and sing with the animals. But then, a handsome prince arrives on horseback. He is, of course, smitten with me and declares he is in love with me at first sight. Oh, princess, I'm in love with you at first sight. Marry me. I can't live without you. I hop onto his horse and we fly around. What? It's a dream. Horses fly in my dream. <laughs> anyway, then he whisks me away to his kingdom and we live happily ever after. <sighs> it's my favorite dream. But it was just that, a dream. Oddly enough, there was a prince from a nearby kingdom who looked a lot like the prince in Briar Rose's dream. His name was Prince John. Prince John and his brother Peter grew up hearing the legend of the sleeping princess and the true love that would save her. Everyone said her castle was somewhere deep in the woods, but no one had been able to find it. No way, I've been all through those woods. That's all just fairy tale stuff. You don't know for sure. It could be true. Yeah, right. Next you're going to tell me the fairies are real. But remember, kids, fairies are real. And they were on the lookout for a prince who might be Briar Rose's one true love. He seems like a nice boy. He doesn't even believe in fairies. No, not that one. The other one. The one who looks all dreamy-eyed whenever anyone mentions the princess. Oh, that one. Yes, he does seem nice. We have to lead him to the castle. Then he'll find Briar Rose. And somehow, they'll fall in love. Haven't figured that part out yet. Maybe we could just sprinkle him with some pixie glitter. Did you hear something? Huh? Gazoontite. Could have sworn I heard a tiny sneeze. Heh, <laughs> it was probably the fairies. Oh look, he's handsome too. Let's go tell Grand Fairy and Sparkle that we found the perfect prince. 
Twinkles and Buttercup flew back towards the castle, excited to tell the other good fairies that they had found a prince for Briar Rose. But they were suddenly stopped in their tracks. Hello, Stinkle, Butterpoop. What's up? It's Twinkles! And Buttercup! What are you doing here, Grimsley? You were banned! Yes, but the king and queen who banned me are fast asleep. What are they gonna do? Snore me to death? Well, they're gonna be awake soon because we found a charming young prince to come break the curse. Yeah, we're gonna tell Grand Fairy and Sparkle right now! You are, huh? It'd be a shame if you couldn't do that. What do you mean? What's the matter? Mean Fairy got your tongue? <laughs> okay, have fun with that. See ya! And I will see ya. Because there is no way I'm going to let you break my curse and spoil all my fun! First, let's check on Briar Rose. Still sleeping. Buttercup and Twinkles thought that they had discovered the perfect match for Briar Rose when they found Prince John. But after Grimsley's curse, they couldn't speak. So how were they going to tell Grand Fairy and Sparkles? Oh, I love charades! A bird! A plane! Superman? I think they're trying to say that a bird attacked them. Why don't you just write it down? None of us know how to read or write. Oh, right. They don't teach that at fairy school. How about drawing? Can you guys draw out what you're trying to say? Grimsley casting a spell and they can't talk. Oh, Grimsley cursed you and took your voices. But why? Because they fell in love with the prince. Huh? And then Grimsley must have found out and cursed them so they couldn't tell anyone. Now tell us how to find that prince. Buttercup and Twinkles drew out directions on how to get to the prince's castle, and Grand Fairy and Sparkle set out to find him. Let's check on Briar Rose again and see how things are going with her. Still snoozing away. <laughs> Let's see what she's dreaming about. Ah, it's the one about the prince. Really looks like true love, doesn't it? But wait, what's that? The bad fairy Grimsley! Oh no, that's not good. We only want Briar Rose to have sweet dreams. Well, let's get back to the story. When Grand Fairy and Sparkle got to the castle, they scooped it out detective style. Got him! Let's go! Remember, try not to scare him. Got it! Hi! <laughs> oh no! He's out cold. Hey, just like Briar Rose! She's sleeping, he's sleeping. Match me to heaven. Hello, Prince. Wake up. Oh, Prince. Here, allow me. Hey, wake up. Uh. Don't be scared. We're fairies, and we've come to tell you about your true love. Huh? But what the good fairies didn't know, boys and girls, is that they were talking to the wrong prince. Prince Peter. Uh, the right prince, Prince John, was far away. See, Grimsley had beaten Good Fairy and Sparkle to the castle and captured Prince John. That's right, kids. Grimsley would stop at nothing to foil the Good Fairy's effort to break her spell. Where am I? You're in the Enchanted Kingdom, the land of magic and fairies. And who are you? I'm Grimsley, the greatest fairy of them all. Oh, very impressive. And why am I tied up? Well, I may as well tell you. You are supposed to fall in love with a princess named Briar Rose, a.k.a. Sleeping Beauty. I am? Yes, but she's cursed to sleep for 100 years, and I can't have you going to break the curse. Wait, are you talking about THE Sleeping Beauty? I knew she was real. But wait, why don't you want me to break the curse? I don't want you to break the curse because I'm the one who cursed her. But why did you curse her? Because I'm a bad fairy and that's what I do. Now zip it before I curse you too. Prince John had so many more questions, but he decided he'd better do as Grimsley said and zip it. He soon fell asleep and had a dream, a very sweet dream about a lovely princess. Prince John had fallen asleep and was dreaming of a princess. It was just a dream, but it felt so real. So real that when he woke up, he was very disappointed to find that he was still tied up at Grimsley's. The good news was the bad fairy was nowhere to be seen. Prince John knew that this was his chance. I have to escape. <clears throat> huh, that was easy. 
Yeah, fun fact, fairies are terrible at tying knots. That's why they never wear shoes with any laces. Once he was untied, Prince John hightailed it out of there, but he quickly found out he had no idea where he was or where he should go. Meanwhile, Briar was still in her deep sleep, dreaming a sweet dream about her prince. Ah, her dashing prince. But then something weird happened. Her prince suddenly changed into someone else. Another prince. But this prince was all wrong. He said, No, I don't think this is true love. Sorry. Huh? That part wasn't a dream. You see, Grand Fairy and Sparkle had brought Prince Peter to see Briar Rose. They thought he would take one look at Briar Rose and realize he was madly in love with her. But he just saw a sleeping princess with a little bit of drool on her cheek. They asked him, So, are you in love? And Prince Peter replied, You guessed it. No, I don't think this is true love. Sorry. Are you sure? Yeah, no. Why did you think we'd be in love anyway? She's cursing to a deep sleep, and only her true love can wake her up. We thought that might be you. Whoa, this is the legendary Sleeping Beauty. My brother is always going on and on and on about her. It's like he's in love with her or something. Wait, hold up. You have a brother? Yeah. That must be who Twinkles and Buttercup saw. Where is he? I don't know. I saw him leaving with some little lady. Hey, come to think of it, she had wings just like you guys. Grimsley! We have to go rescue that prince. Let's go! Okay, I guess I'll just see myself out. The good fairies set off to find Grimsley's hideout, but they wouldn't find Prince John there. He was wandering the enchanted forest trying to get to Sleeping Beauty's castle. It must be around here somewhere. Prince John was determined to find Briar Rose. He trudged through the mud. He swam through alligator-infested waters. He leapt over pits of snakes. Nothing could stop him. That is, until he got to a very large, very tall brick wall covered in vines. Whoa, that is one big wall. Whatever, I'll just climb up the vines. Ow, ow, ooh, ah, ah. You see, the wall was covered in rose vines and prickly thorns, otherwise known as... <gasps> Briars. That's right, kids. Thorny bushes are also known as briars. Prince John wondered if this might be significant. Hey, briars, roses, briar rose. I bet briar rose is on the other side of this wall. And she was. Only trouble was, Prince John would have to climb over the very ouchy wall of thorny briars. But he was determined. The fate of true love kept him going strong. Ow, ow, ooh, ouch, ooh. Ow. About a hundred hours later, and Prince John was at the top of the wall. <gasps> Is this Sleeping Beauty's castle? Wait, what's that noise? <coughs> that sounds like snoring. This is it. I made it. Woohoo! <coughs> I'm okay. Time to go break the spell. Looks like we're on our way to a happy ending, kids. But wouldn't you know it, trouble was a Bruin in another part of the Enchanted Forest. Grand Fairy and Sparkle had just made it to Grimsley's hideout and found a very angry Grimsley. And kids, when fairies get angry, watch out. You, you did this. Did what? Released my prisoner. Oh, you mean Briar Rose is one true love? We did it. That looks like he's on his way to break the spell, doesn't it? Not if I get there first. And Grimsley shot out like a cannon. What do you think she's gonna do? I don't know, but we better stop her. Oh, uh, not again. The good fairies knew that they had to stop Grimsley. It was a race against time, good versus evil, but love must prevail. Prince John had just made it to the sleeping castle. Now, let's go save the princess. Prince John wandered the castle looking for Briar Rose's room, which as it turns out, wasn't too difficult. Well. That was easy. <gasps> All right. Prince John opened the door. You might imagine something like this happened next. My prince, my one true love. Marry me. But what really happened is this. Uh, hey, Briar Rose. Um, I think I'm supposed to wake you up. I mean... I don't mean to sound presumptuous or anything, but I might be your true love. It's destiny or something. Um, I 
guess I'll wait here until you wake up. I'm sorry. This is really awkward. I I'm just going to wait outside. Oh, I'm okay! <gasps> what was that? Sorry, uh, I just fell. <laughs> Briar Rose, you're awake! Who are... <gasps> you're my prince from the dreams! Huh? You dreamed of me? Yeah. Wait, am I awake or is this another dream? Oh, please, please, pretty, please tell me I'm really awake. You're really awake. And she was. Sleeping Beauty was no longer sleeping. Her true love had awakened her by being clumsy and noisy. How romantic. Woohoo! <laughs> Wait, what year is it? How long was I out for? Did you hear me snoring? Oh gosh, do I have drool on my face? Please tell me I don't have drool on my face. All good. Thank goodness. <laughs> so, you broke the spell, huh? <laughs> yes, I'm apparently your one true love. I mean, if it's okay with you. Yeah, I mean, I feel like I already know everything about you. This is so weird, <laughs> but cool. But just as the two lovebirds were getting to know each other, they heard a very odd noise. What is that? It sounds like an airplane. Okay, but what is that? Oh, <laughs> I, I guess those were invented after you were cursed. It's a thing you can fly around in. Oh, what? Cool. Wait, how long was I asleep? Like, almost a full hundred years. So I'm really, like, over a hundred years old? <laughs> Is my hair gray? No, it's brown. Um, <laughs> I think we should be more focused on that noise, because it sounds like it's coming right this way. I'm okay. Oh, hello, Briar Rose. You're up. Who are you? It's the bad fairy. We have to run. Oh, oh. Oh, oh, my legs are asleep. I can't move. I am Grimsley, the greatest fairy of evil, and I curse you. But before she could finish her curse, Briar Rose said, Pull me out of here. Oh. Hey, where'd they go? Once they got out of the castle, Briar Rose tried to wake up the rest of her body. Better? Yeah, I think so. Okay, good. Because <laughs> it's time to run! Where are we gonna go? I don't know! But wherever they ran, Grimsley was going to follow. And she was working up her worst curse yet! Briar Rose and Prince John were on the run from the bad fairy Grimsley. Only problem was, they didn't know where to go. So they kind of just ran around, freaking out. <laughs> Meanwhile, since the 100 years of sleeping spell had been broken, the rest of the castle was waking up. We're awake! Hurrah! But the hurrahs stopped when they found that Briar Rose was not in her room. Where's the princess? <gasps> the princess is missing. That's when, rather conveniently, the good fairies arrived. Grand Fairy and Sparkle were exhausted from flying all over, trying to undo Grimsley's mischief. But they had a job to do, and good fairies never give up. So we have some good news and some bad news. Good news is the spell has been broken. Yay! But the bad news... What are they doing? Oh, Grimsley cursed them and took their voices. They're trying to tell you the bad news. Which is that Grimsley is planning another curse. And we're not sure what she's going to do. But it's probably very, very, very bad. Oh, no. She must have taken Briar Rose. Don't worry. We'll find her. Let's go, gang. Back in the forest, Briar Rose and Prince John had found what they thought was a great hiding spot. Let's just hang out here for a bit and maybe Grimsley will just give up and leave. But that proved to be wishful thinking because guess who showed up? Hey guys, what's up? Are we playing hide and seek? Grimsley! <laughs> yep, Grimsley had found them. Not good. Hmm, let's see. What sort of evil spell should I cast? I could turn you into frogs. That's always fun. Oh, or how about I turn Briar Rose into a frog and Prince John into a fly? And then Briar the frog will eat John the fly. <laughs> what do you say? Uh, no thanks. Oh, I could turn you into donkeys. Have people, have horse, maybe turn you into statues. Oh, I know. I won't turn you into anything at all. You won't? No. I'll turn myself into... A dragon! What are we gonna do? Uh, I don't know, run? Okay, maybe not. 
Fortunately, help was on the way. The good fairies were flying at top speed on the hunt for Grimsley, ready to stop her in her evil tracks. Uh oh! Uh, what's our plan again? Find Grimsley and trap her in this bag. Yeah, I think we'll need a bigger bag. I have an idea. Follow me. The good fairies flew right at Grimsley's face. You know, the one that was breathing fire at everyone? Usually not a good idea, but... Pixie Glitter, now! Hey, get out of here! I can't see! Ow! I burned myself! Well, maybe you should stop breathing fire! Never! Ow! Give it up, Grimsley! You're a beat! Yeah! Prince John and Briar Rose have true love. They broke the spell. Yeah, love wins. This was like a poison to Grimsley. Bad fairies do not like love. Ugh, gross. Don't invite me to the wedding. Don't worry, you're not going anywhere. Except fairy jail. Is that a thing? We'll figure it out. The important thing was that the day was saved. Grimsley was defeated and forced to undo all her evil spells. Twinkles and Buttercup got their voices back and the Enchanted Kingdom was awake and happy. Normally, we'd say that this was a happy ending, but since Briar Rose and John only just met, let's call this one a happy beginning. Hi, Aladdin here and welcome to my palace. <laughs> Come on inside. <laughs> if you watched my story, then you've already seen some of my palace, but now I'm going to give you the grand tour. First up, here's what I like to call the fun room. This is where Rami and I and the genies like to hang out. It's got video games, lightsabers, and a ball pit. Okay, next check out the kitchen. I know, I know. That sounds boring compared to the fun room, but this is no normal kitchen. We have a multi-flavored ice cream machine, a pizza oven, and a giant waffle maker. I mean, What's better than a waffle? Answer, a giant waffle! Don't worry, we get plenty of exercise too. Check out the gym. There's a rock wall, a dance studio, and no home gym is complete without a trampoline. Oh, oh I'm okay. <laughs> and last but not least, let's see the backyard. When I made a wish to be a queen with a palace, the genie totally could have given me like a basic castle, stone walls, moat, etc. But the lamp genie totally hooked it up. I mean, look at this. There's a giant pool shaped like a guitar, a roller coaster, and a water slide. Well, that's my palace tour. I hope you had fun. Come back soon. Wow, I think I need to remodel my house. <laughs> Hit like if you want a roller coaster and an ice cream machine at your house too. And now let's rewatch all of Aladdin's adventures from chapter one all the way to the end. Let's go. And here's where her story begins. You were expecting a boy, right? <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> now let's get on with the story. Aladdin lived with her mom in a teeny tiny house in the middle of a bustling city. Aladdin and her mom didn't have much, but they were crafty and made do with what they had. Right? Who needs money when you've got all this? <laughs> all what? See, I'm sort of an antique dealer. I sell fine wares and collectibles to the upper echelons of society. You sell junk. Okay, well, some might call it junk, but one man's trash is another man's treasure, right? <laughs> and on that note, time to go sell some junk. Super fine collectibles and treasures here. Come and get your super fine treasures. What's that, a broken clock? Yes, sir, and who wouldn't want the power to stop time? What am I supposed to do with one shoe? Uh, go find Cinderella. <laughs> Aladdin stuck around, but nobody was buying. She was just about to give up when a mysterious man approached her. Excuse me, young man. <clears throat> er, young lady. What can I do for you? I can't help but notice you have some mighty nice things for sale. <gasps> Finally, someone with some taste. What if I told you I know where you could find some treasure? I'm listening. And it's free for the taking. All you have to do is go get it. Okay, I could be described as a go-getter, but what's the catch? There's a lamp. I want you to bring that to me. But the rest of the treasure is mine? <gasps> 
Everything else is yours. Hmm, let me think it over. Okay, you got yourself a deal, mister. <laughs> Please call me Mustafa. So the mysterious Mustafa had told Aladdin where to go for the treasure. Awesome, right? Free treasure. But then Aladdin got to where it was hidden. Not so awesome. I have to go in there? Okay, you can do this, Aladdin. You got this. Uh, it's dark and it's stinky. I officially do not like caves, but eyes on the prize, Aladdin. Get that treasure, girl. Oh, ow! Oh, no big deal. Just a little scrape. Wait, what's that sound? It sounds like a, oh, a giant bowling ball. No! Okay, that's not normal. This might be harder than I thought, but I gotta get that treasure. See, not so bad. It's just dark and scary and possibly booby trapped. Uh, no big deal. Hey, what's that? A ring, awesome, shiny. I must be close to the rest of the treasure. Wait, what's that? I'm gonna have to jump. I made it, woohoo! And look! Oh wow, oh wow, oh wow, oh wow, wow! Cool! Oh, hey, oh no, got another booby trap! No, no, now I'll never get out! It's too wide, I can't jump across that, I'm stuck! I'm stuck in this cave forever! I can't believe we're gonna perish in a stinking cave. A lot of good this treasure's gonna do me in here. Uh, hello? Uh, ah, uh, who are you? Who are you? I'm the genie of the ring. What? The genie of the ring. It's simple. You found the ring, you rubbed it, and then poof, here I am. Oh, so what now? Don't you know anything about genies? You get a wish. A wish? Oh. Wow, okay, let's see. If I could have anything in the whole world. Well, not anything. Like, you can't wish for more wishes. Oh. And I can't turn you into a princess or anything cool like that. Really? I thought genies were supposed to grant, like, any wish I wanted. Oh, so now you're a genie expert? No, I guess I'm just a little disappointed. Look, I'm just a ring genie. A ring genie is not on the same level as like a wizard or a genie in a bottle or a magic lamp genie. Those guys are the best. Oh, could I wish for a magic lamp genie? No. Oh, well, okay, a basic wish then. Just a minute ago, you were crying that you'd never get out of this cave. Oh? So maybe that's a good wish? Oh, you're right. Okay, I wish I could get out of this cave. Wish granted. That's it? Well, now you can get to the other side. I thought it would be more of a poof, an outside kind of a thing. Nope, sorry. I'm just a ring, ring genie. genie. I know. Well, thanks anyways. You're welcome. My work here is done. Oh, well, that was brief. Okay, I'll just gather up this treasure and go. So Aladdin took her treasures and made her way out of the cave. This time she was very careful not to set off any booby traps. I'm out, <laughs> yay. <laughs> Aladdin skipped all the way home, excited for all the treasures she had found. There were gold coins, jewels, and of course, the antique lamp. It's late, I'll just go to sleep, and tomorrow I'll find Mustafa. <sighs> Aladdin slept deeply and peacefully that night. It had been a long day, but when she woke the next morning, she found all her treasure was gone. <gasps> oh no! Oh, there it is, oh, phew, I thought it was gone. <laughs> Where did you get all this stuff, young lady? I promise it's legit. I made a deal with this mysterious guy at the market. Okay, I realize how shady that sounds. Anyway, he told me where to find all this treasure, and he said that I could have it all except for this one lamp. <laughs> he wants that, family heirloom or something. I don't know. This old thing, it's all smudged up and dirty. I can fix that. There, just like new. Ta-da! Oh. Wow, another genie, just like the one from the ring. Excuse me, I am not a ring genie. I'm a magic lamp genie. Big difference. Oh, 
I know. You grant the most magical wishes. Is she gonna be okay, by the way? Oh, yeah, she faints whenever she's surprised. I see. Now, what will be your first wish? Well, I don't know. See, the lamp belongs to someone else, so I guess he should get the wishes, right? Mustafa and I had a deal. Whoa, slow down. Did you say Mustafa? Yes, the lamp you popped out of belongs to him. No, 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 no. That simply will not do. Why? Mustafa is a bad guy, a villain, a nayer do well a big old meanie. He's evil. He seemed nice enough. Nope. Wrong. I cannot permit you to turn over this lamp or me to that guy. Well, then I'd better wish to go far, far away because he's going to come looking for me. Yes, but don't be hasty. Think hard about your wishes. You only get three. Three wishes. Okay. What's the thing you want more than anything in the world? Riches? Power? A super cool unicorn for a pet? Hmm. Hello. I've come for my lamp. You better wish for something fast. Uh, okay. I wish. I wish. I wish. Aladdin was thinking hard about her wish. I wish. I wish. I wish. Come on, kid. I'm thinking. Hello, let me in. We had a deal. Hurry. OK, I got it. I wish that I were a queen with a palace and a crown and everything. You sure? Yeah. All righty. Um, hello. Now is not really a good time for a nap. I'm granting the wish. Hold on. Oh, sorry. Let me in. Oh, do hurry, though. And pow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow, oh, wow, oh, wow, oh, wow. You did it. Of course I did. I'm a magical lamp genie. Mustafa will never find us in here. Yay. Wait, am I really a queen? You're wearing a crown, aren't you? I am. Cool. Hey, you didn't change the rest of my outfit. You didn't ask, but don't worry, you're a queen now. You can order the finest clothes in all the land. Awesome. <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me, I'd like to take a nap before your next wish. Granting wishes is hard work. Okay, see ya. Huh? Where are we? Hey, Mom. Long story. So, boys and girls, in just a matter of minutes, Aladdin went from being a poor peddler to being a rich and powerful queen. Pretty much anything she wanted, she could have. Yep, turns out being a queen is kind of like having your wishes granted all day long. Watch this. Ice cream, please. Pizza, please. Puppies, please. Yay, an ice cream pizza puppy party. Of course, being a queen wasn't all fun and games. It was an important job. Queen Aladdin did her best to be a good and fair queen, making sure everyone in her queendom was happy and carefree. I hereby decree that today and every Tuesday hereafter will be Taco Tuesday. That's right, all you can eat tacos all day long. And free puppies for everyone. <laughs> I'm allergic to dogs. Well, then you shall have a kitten. Yay! Oh, hail the, the queen! queen. All hail the queen! All Word of her popularity queen. soon spread. Well, well, well. Queen Aladdin, huh? Oh no, kids. Mustafa was on to Aladdin. Not to worry, though. Royal palaces always have high security. I need to speak to Aladdin. Don't you mean Queen Aladdin? Believe me, she's no queen. Show some respect. Aladdin is a common thief who stole something from me and I want it back. Queen Aladdin would never do anything bad. Yes, you hush up and go away. I won't give up so easily. See? But first, he would need a plan. Mustafa wanted to get into the palace to seal the magic lamp, but the guards wouldn't let him in. Someone else would have to go in undercover. But who? Hello, young man. How is business today? Oh, not good at all. I haven't sold a single thing all day. What if I told you I had a job for you? I can pay good money. I'm listening. Mustafa explained his plan to get the lamp from Aladdin. 
First, I dress you up in rich clothes. Then I send you to Queen Aladdin's palace. You pretend to be a dashing prince. You woo Aladdin, yada, 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 and yoink, you steal the magic lamp. But, but why do you want the lamp? Because it's mine, I want it back, and it's none of your business. Oh, okay. But whatever you do, don't rub it. Huh? It's very valuable, and it must be in perfect condition. Now stop asking me questions. Do we have a deal or not? Deal. So the next day, the peddler showed up to Aladdin's palace wearing his new princely clothes. He cleaned up pretty nice. So good, in fact, that the guards didn't suspect a thing. Hello, I'm Prince Rami. Uh, I'm here to see the queen. Ah, uh, yes, of course. Right this way. Your Majesty. What's up? Are you here to discuss the cupcake party this weekend? Ooh, what's that? Oh, we're having this party where we're gonna decorate the world's largest cupcake. <laughs> Wouldn't a big cupcake just be a regular cake? Hmm, I guess you're right. <laughs> Either way you look at it, it's gonna be a lot of fun and really delicious. Sounds like it, but that isn't why I'm here. No? I came to offer my hand in courtship. Huh? That's fancy prince talk. I'd like to take you out on a date. A date? Hmm, I've never been on a date before, but I guess it makes sense. I'm royalty, you're royalty, um, sure. How about you escort me to the cupcake party? Perfect, it's a date. Cool, see you then. Wow, a date, huh, I wonder what that's all about. Aladdin decided she needed some advice. hey -o! what's up? You need a wish? More like advice. I have a date this weekend. Ooh, a date? How exciting! Somebody cute? Yeah, and he's a prince, so I need to know everything there is to know about romance. Hmm, well, I've never been on a date because, you know, I live in a lamp. Oh, right. But I do read a lot. Let's see, what would Cinderella do? She got a new dress from her fairy godmother and went to a ball. Okay, let's get a new outfit. Two shoes, though. How are your dance moves? Uh, okay, sure. Now let's see. What about Sleeping Beauty? What worked for her? Well, she just took a long nap and the prince showed up. Right, okay. So what about Belle? How did she find romance? She moved into a castle with a beast and they fell in love. Okay, weird. You know what? I think just be yourself and everything will work out. That's it? Or you can wish that it goes well and you get married and live happily ever after. Yeah, why don't we see how the first date goes and we'll just go from there. Good thinking. Meanwhile, Rami was getting some advice of his own. Bring flowers, tell her she looks nice, and ask her to dance. I'm a really good dancer, watch this. Uh, okay. Anyway, while she's busy dancing, you sneak away and go find the lamp. Uh, and then you'll pay me? More money than you've ever seen. Awesome! Rami ran home, super excited to tell his family about his deal with Mustafa. They had fallen on hard times and money was scarce, but the lamp heist would change everything. Rami dreamed about all the stuff he could buy, but then he thought about Aladdin. He didn't want to steal from her. Stealing was wrong. But Mustafa did say the lamp was actually his, so maybe Aladdin stole it from him. But she didn't look like a thief. She looked nice. Rami didn't know what to think. He finally fell asleep and dreamed about nice things like giant cupcakes and dancing with Aladdin. And back at the palace, Aladdin was dreaming about dancing with Rami. The day of the cupcake party finally arrived, and Aladdin could not have been more excited. Hair, check. Outfit, check. Dance moves, check. Oh, Jeannie, this party is going to be a maze. Jeannie? Guess he went back to sleep in his lamp. You're gonna miss out on an awesome party, dude. Oh well, more giant cupcake for me. <laughs> um, sleep through a party? I don't think so, queen. Let's raise the roof. And uh, no one really says that anymore. Oh, <laughs> uh, they don't? Well, cut me some slack. I know, I know. Hashtag lamp life. We look good. Party time. So yeah, Aladdin and Genie were pretty jazzed about the party. Rami was less excited. 
Well, he was excited to see Aladdin and excited to eat a giant cupcake, but he was not so excited about having to steal a lamp. Well, not steal. Return it to its rightful owner. That is, if Mustafa's telling me the truth. But how do I know I can trust him? Aladdin seems so nice. Okay, get it together. Deep breath, Rami. Relax. Hey. <laughs> Hi. So. Um. I want to check out the flowers. <laughs> Sweet. <What? laughs> Thank you for the flowers. Let's go check out the cupcake. Whoa! It's so big. Told ya. We're making the biggest cupcake in the history of cupcakes. <laughs> Are you going to drink the world's largest glass of milk to wash it down? Ooh, that's a good idea. I like the way you think. Aladdin and Rami talked and danced and of course ate like a gajillion bites of giant cupcake throughout the night. They were having such a good time that Rami forgot all about his mission to take the magic lamp. Mustafa, on the other hand, had not forgotten. So I said to the baker, what do you mean you don't have giant sprinkles? You can't have a giant cupcake without giant sprinkles. I mean, that's cupcakes 101. <laughs> huh? Do you have something for me? A uh, cupcake? The lamp. Where is my lamp? I haven't been able to break away yet. Well, how about now? I guess... Rami, there you are. Drat, I have to hide before she sees me. Now go get that lamp. Hey, who are you talking to? No one, just some guy who thought he knew me. Well, it's time for the limbo contest. You in? Definitely. How low can you go? How low can you go? Okay, now where would I be if I were a magic lamp? Is that it? Nah, it doesn't look magical. But then again, what do I know about magic lamps? Rami, what are you doing in here? I got lost. Your house is so big. Right? I get lost in here all the time. <laughs> Come back outside because we're about to light the giant cupcake candles. Spoiler alert, they're actually fireworks. <laughs> Do you like fireworks? I love fireworks. Rami decided to give up looking for the lamp and followed Aladdin outside. Right? <laughs> yeah! Do you do stuff like this at your palace? My what? You're, you're a prince, right? Don't you live in a palace? <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, we do stuff like this all the time. Oops, Rami had almost forgotten that he was supposed to be a prince. It was hard work pretending to be something that you're not. Little did Rami know that Aladdin was playing pretend too. But neither of them had to pretend to be having a good time. That part came naturally. They even agreed to hang out again on the very next day. Aladdin was so excited, she ran to find the genie to tell him everything. <laughs> hey, genie! It's gone! What's gone? The lamp! So, uh, basically my house and my entire identity! It's gone! All gone! What? The lamp genie was very upset, as you can see. This is unprecedented. I don't know what the rules are with this sort of thing. I don't even know if I'm still a magic genie without my lamp. Aladdin, wish something to test my powers. But then I'd waste a perfectly good wish. Oh, forget it. It's no use. I don't feel magical anymore. Look, I can barely even fly around. Why don't we ask the ring genie? The ring genie? Ring genies don't know nothing. Hi there! Ooh, nice digs! Oh, great! Lamp Genie's here. I guess I'm not needed. Actually, Lamp Genie lost his lamp. Don't tell him that! You don't say! Well, well, well. Lamp Genie's not so big and powerful without his lamp, huh? Gosh, I didn't realize there was such a rivalry between the genies. I told you not to bring the Ring Genie into this! Hey, I'm only trying to help. Ring Genie, can you help us get back the lamp? You already used your wish. Remember? I can only grant one. <laughs> one wish. That's all you've granted me so far. Well, there are extenuating circumstances. There he goes, showing off with his big words. Typical magic lamp, Genie. Okay, guys, that's enough bickering. He started it. Zip it! Okay, Lamp Genie, are we 100% sure it's gone? I looked everywhere. Someone stole it! <gasps> Her 
probably Mustafa. A, Mustafa doesn't know where we are. And B, I never would have invited him to the cupcake party. He wouldn't get past security. Aw, you had a cupcake party and didn't invite me? Was it fun? So fun. We made a giant cupcake. <laughs> Aw, that sounds awesome. Forget about the cupcake. I need my lamp. Hey, you got the lamp. Yes, I had to take matters into my own hands, Rami. Now the lamp is back with its rightful owner, me. So I guess you're not going to pay me now, huh? Definitely not. Oh, but before you go, watch this. This is going to blow your mind. Remember when I said not to rub the lamp? Well, that's because it's a magic lamp. And when you rub it three times, a genie pops out. I said a genie pops out. Is this thing on? Well, uh, I'm just gonna go. Uh-uh-uh, no you don't. Give me back those prince clothes. Here, you can wear this home. World's best grandma? Rami was sad. He didn't even have any money to bring back to his family, and he didn't have his fancy clothes. He was supposed to hang out with Aladdin the very next day. Aladdin will never believe I'm a prince now. So, the next day, Rami didn't show up for their date. Aladdin didn't know what to think. She went to tell the genie all about it. He would know what to do. But when she found the genie, she saw he was even sadder than she was. <sighs> genie, genie, are you okay? I need my lamp, Aladdin. What's a genie without his magic lamp? We'll get the lamp back, I promise. How? We don't know where it is. We don't know who took it. It's hopeless. <laughs> Cry? Why don't we try a new lamp? How about this lamp over there? It's nice! Is it a magic lamp? No, but it's shaped like a monkey, and that's fun, right? <laughs> I need my lamp, Aladdin! I'm a magic lamp genie, not a monkey lamp genie! Well, I'm sad too. I was supposed to have a date with Rami, and he never showed up. I thought we really hit it off. That's it! He's the one who stole my lamp! Prince Rami? No way! Think about it, Aladdin. You never heard of that guy before, and he just shows up and then disappears. You know what also disappeared? My lamp. But he seems so nice. We have to find him. Let's go. But Aladdin and the lamp genie weren't the only ones looking for Rami. Mustafa had decided he'd need the fake prince's help one more time. Listen, kid, I need your help. There's a genie that's supposed to be in this lamp. I think he's hiding at Aladdin's palace, and you're going to go in and get him for me. Rami wasn't so sure about Mustafa's plan. But I can't go back to the palace. Aladdin and I were supposed to have a date and I didn't show up. She's probably mad at me. Well, just bring her flowers and say you're sorry. I don't know. Rami thought about it. He did want to see Aladdin again, but he didn't want to kidnap a genie. Finally, he agreed to go. Rami changed back into the prince outfit and was just about to leave when he overheard something interesting. Then when Rami brings me the genie, I'll wish to become king of the whole world. I'll be the evilest king in history. Ha <laughs> ha. Ooh, I better work on my evil laugh. <laughs> hey, that was pretty good. Oh no. Rami hightailed it to Aladdin's palace. That means he ran really fast. But when he got there, the guards were not so welcoming. Hi, I'm Prince Rami, here to see Aladdin. Queen Aladdin has put you on the no list. What's that? If you ask to come in, we say no. Oh, can you tell her I'm really sorry about yesterday? No. Well, can you just tell her that Mustafa is trying to steal the genie? He wants to use his magic to become the evilest king of the whole world. Whoa, 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 whoa. What was that? Are you the magic genie? Cool. Yeah, but excuse moi did you say Mustafa wants to use me to become an evil king bent on world domination? Yeah! Come with me! Inside the palace, the genie grilled Rami. How can I trust you? You're the one who stole my lamp, right? I was supposed to, but I didn't. Mustafa did. So, you're friends with Mustafa, is that it? No, he just offered me money. For my family. But you don't need the money. You're a rich prince. Actually, I'm not really a prince. You're a liar, liar, pants on fire too, huh? No, I mean, I guess that was a lie. Yes, but I really like Aladdin, and I just want to tell her the truth. 
I'm listening. Aladdin! Rami, you hurt my feelings when you didn't show up yesterday. Aladdin, I wanted to, but I didn't want you to know I'm not really a prince. I thought you wouldn't like me. You look like a real prince. Oh, right. Mustafa gave me these clothes. I'm really just a poor peddler. Well, you never should have lied. Just be yourself. That's easy for you. You're a beautiful queen. Beautiful? <laughs> Aw, thanks. <laughs> but, Rami, I'm not a real queen. What? I made a wish on the magic lamp. I'm really just like you. You are? Yeah, and I still want to go on that date. <laughs> I mean, if you want to. <laughs> of course I do. I think you're the best. How romantic. Hello? What about Mustafa? He wants to capture me and use my magic to take over the world. All right. We need a plan. Wait, I got it. We can use the ring, Genie. Why? Trust me. Meanwhile, Mustafa was getting impatient. Where is Rami? He should be back by now. He paced around, getting angrier and angrier uh, by the minute. That's it. I'm going to find that genie myself. But when he went to open the door, Rami burst in. I got him, Mustafa. I got the genie. And the fun begins. Bring him here. Let's put him back in the lamp. Come in, genie. I'm here, the genie of the magic lamp. Now, who has a wish? Mustafa was so excited that the magic lamp genie was finally there to grant his wishes. Well, it was actually the ring genie, but he didn't know that. How many wishes do I get? Three? Can I wish for more wishes? Only three. Choose wisely. Okay, I wish to be king of the world. Well, that was fast. Okay, alakazam, pow! Wish granted. I'm the king of the world! <laughs> now, you may have noticed that your house didn't turn into a palace. Yeah, what's up with that? You didn't wish for a palace. I didn't know I had to be so specific. Okay, I wish for... No, 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 no. Don't waste a wish on something you can just take. You're an evil king, remember? Let's go take Queen Aladdin's castle. Ooh, yeah. And then after I take her castle, I'll lock her up in a dungeon forever. At this point, kids, you might be frightened for Aladdin. I mean, Mustafa said he was going to take the palace and lock her in a dungeon. But I have a feeling this is all part of Aladdin's plan. Let's keep reading and see. Mustafa and the Ring Genie went to Aladdin's castle. Move! Oh, there you are. Hello, Aladdin. Oh, no, it's Big Bad Mustafa. That's right. I'm the king of this castle now, and you're getting locked in a dungeon forever. <laughs> Oh no, not a dungeon. Yeah, a dark, stinky dungeon. Come with me. Oh, wait, where is your dungeon? In the basement? Or maybe out back near an alligator-filled moat? Oh, this place doesn't actually have a dungeon. Rookie mistake, I guess. Pathetic. But I guess you could just, like, lock me in a room and we'll call it a dungeon? Fine. And just as Mustafa thought he was about to lock away Aladdin forever and ever, the real lamp genie popped out. Who are you? I'm the genie of the magic lamp. No, you're not. That's the genie. That's the ring genie. He's basically powerless. Like, zero magic. Hey, I thought you'd trick Mustafa. That's right. Be nice. But I'm the evil king of the world. He granted my wish. Look, I have a crown and everything. I bought that at a costume shop. You're not the king of anything, Mustafa. And now you're going to stay locked up in this room until you learn your lesson. Rami, let's go. What is he doing here? I'm here for my date with Aladdin. He's not a real prince, you know. He's a common ragamuffin. I know, so am I. Toodaloo, Mustafa. And so Aladdin and Rami left Mustafa behind and went out for some ice cream. Ring Genie and Lamp Genie went along too to celebrate the victory over Mustafa and to try ice cream, which being genies they never had before. Whoa, this stuff is delicious. <laughs> right? <laughs> Guess you miss out on a lot when you live in a lamp. <laughs> now I can't believe people don't just wish for ice cream, like all the time. Hey, Aladdin, why didn't you just make a wish to beat Mustafa? And waste a perfectly good wish on him? No way! Well, what are you going to wish for? More ice cream! I don't know. I feel like I already have everything I could want. And if I use all my wishes, then we won't get to hang out anymore, right? That's true. I would go back in my lamp and wait for my next wisher. And then I'd miss you. I'd miss you too, all of you. Even Ring Genie, maybe. Aw, so sweet. Okay, so 
that settles it. No more wishing for a very, very, very long time. Cool. Oh, wait, actually there is something. Remember when you mentioned wishing for a unicorn? I think I'd like to use my second wish for a unicorn, <laughs> but then no more wishing. You sure? Yes. I officially wish for a beautiful unicorn with rainbow hair that I can brush and braid and oh, she should have wings so I can fly around with her. I think that's technically a pegacorn or an alicorn. Whatever. Okay, wish granted. Yay, okay, unicorn time. Whoa. It was a happy day for Aladdin and the gang and more happy days followed. Aladdin and Rami got married. And here are the rings. I now pronounce you married. The end. Hi, I'm Mary Shelley Frankenstein, sister to the world's biggest mischief-making little brother, Victor Frankenstein. You've all heard that story, of course, but I'm here to tell you my version. Okay, here goes. Once upon a time, long, long ago. Okay, it was actually pretty recent, but I like it when stories start that way. <laughs> anyway. Once upon a time, not very long ago, there was a boy named Victor. Victor Frankenstein. That's Dr. Frankenstein. He's not a doctor, obviously. He's ten. <laughs> ten and a half. Anyway, one day he was bored. And when Victor Frankenstein gets bored, bad things happen. For example, one time he filled all my shoes with slime. Ew! Victor! And then one time, he put baking soda and vinegar in his teacher's coffee. And yeah, it exploded. Victor! And this one time, oh, this is really bad, he put glue on the toilet seat and my dad got stuck. Ah, Victor? So like I was saying, bored Victor equals bad Victor. And that's how the story begins. I'm bored. I want to make something. Something big, something bad, something epic. I know. Today I'm going to create a monster. Victor went down to his laboratory, AKA our basement, and got to work. That's where he did all his experiments. I should have enough to work with down here. Hmm. Let's see, some fishing hooks, I can use those. Slinky, check. Some nuts and bolts and screws and stuff, sure. Modeling clay, finger paints, glue, grandpa's toupee, perfect. A garbage can, some brooms, a mop, googly eyes, a couple of my sister's patriotic girl dolls, my old teddy bear, Mr. Teddy Puff Puff. Wait, no, I didn't mean it, Mr. Teddy Puff Puff. Promise, forgive me? I love you too, Teddy. Aw, that's sweet, but don't be fooled. Victor was up to a seriously naughty scheme. Now back to my seriously naughty scheme. It's time to create my monster. A monster that will wreak havoc and destroy the whole world. <laughs> oh no, don't be scared, Mr. Teddy Puff Puff. My monster won't destroy you. Now, time to work. Victor worked all day into the night, not even stopping for snack time. He snipped, ripped, chopped, blew, Fastened, refastened, attached thingamabobs and whatchamacallits until finally he was satisfied. My monster! Now to bring him to life! It's alive! Okay, I thought that would work. It's alive? How do I turn this thing on? It's. It's. It's alive! <laughs> yes! And now we will unleash chaos onto the world! <laughs> okay, monster, let's go! Oh, are you hungry? Uh. Let's see, what do monsters eat? There's some leftover meatloaf in here. It's really gnarly, so you might like that. Nom, 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 nom. Okay, you get enough to eat yet? We have to go wreak havoc and chaos and stuff. Uh. Whoa, awesome! Hey, wait for me! Victor, you stop right there, young man. Who made this mess? My monster did it? Right, sure, a monster did it. Well, guess who's going to clean it up? Me? That's right. But, oh, no buts. But there was a but. 
a big one. A real, live monster was on the loose! Everywhere the monster went, people screamed and ran. They all thought he was a big and scary monster, but really, he was probably more afraid than anyone. The world was brand new to him, and he couldn't help but be frightened. <laughs> Finally, he found a nice resting spot and fell asleep. Okay, so maybe it wasn't such a good resting spot because during recess, the jungle gym is a pretty happening spot. And it wasn't very long until... And that woke the monster. The monster felt a little bit safer in the woods. He sat there and watched the playground waiting for the kids to leave. A bell rang and the kids left. But then an older group of kids came out, including me. Ow! What's the matter? You don't like dodgeball? I like dodgeball just fine, but we weren't playing dodgeball. You simply threw the ball at my head. See, that I don't like. Whatever, Mary Shelley Stinkenstein. That's not my name. Mary Shelley Stinkenstein. Mary Shelley Stinkenstein. Ah, monster, run! I think that was his attempt at a smile. Thank you for chasing away those bullies, but I have to ask, are you a nice monster or a mean monster? Okay, I'm gonna take a wild, possibly dangerous guess and say that you seem like a nice monster. I'm Mary. Well, recess is over, so I have to go. See ya. <laughs> oh no, you're sad. Okay, how about this? You stay. Stay here, okay? And I'll be back later. Can you nod and let me know you understand? Okay. Great. <laughs> School's out at three. I'll see you then. Back in the classroom, I made a list. Fun learning activities for monsters. Then after school, I met back up with the monster and we got to work. First, we practiced language arts. Repeat after me. Monster. 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 Mon. Okay, that's pretty close. Now add the stir. Monster. Monster. Great. Okay, I should really teach you some more words, but that took like an hour, so let's move on to something else. How about some social skills? Let's try a handshake. Ah. Now we put our hands together and then we shake. Ah. Oh. 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 Ah. Okay, you're doing really great, but can you put me down? Good, thanks. All right, next on the list was how do you high five, but let's move on. <laughs> we spent the rest of the afternoon doing our lessons. The monster learned how to sing. <laughs> and how to dance. Go monster, go monster, go, go monster. And we worked on hygiene. Yes, see, after you eat a whole handful of worms and bugs, it's good to wash your hands. <laughs> and speaking of eating, it's time for me to go home for dinner. Do you think you'll be okay here for tonight? <laughs> yeah, you better come with me. I'll hide you in my old playhouse. But by the time I got home and the monster was all settled in, news had gotten out. Reports of the mystery monster have been coming in all day. From people like this gentleman, I nearly ran him over in my car last night. I don't know if my insurance would have covered that. And these innocent children. I was just minding my own business when he tried to hit me with a ball. City officials are urging citizens to stay inside and lock your doors. But some local vigilantes want to take matters into their own hands. Yeah, we're going to get that monster. I ain't afraid of no monster. Uh-oh. According to eyewitness reports, the monster has caused over $11,000 in damage. 
that an old-fashioned pitchfork and torch-wielding gang of locals has sworn to capture the beast. Yeah! Back to you, Chuck. Oh dear! I told you it was the monster that wrecked the kitchen. Go to bed, Victor. Well, I couldn't just leave the monster outside in my old playhouse. Not with a bunch of vigilantes out there hunting him. <gasps> Shh, okay, you can sleep in here, but you have to be quiet. <coughs> Aw, that's sweet. Now, do you want the top bunk or the bottom? <coughs> oh, you're not sleepy? Do you want to play a game? <coughs> so we played some games. We played Twister. Right foot blue. Uh, close enough. Jenga, Jenga, Jenga. Uh, then we went full on slumber party and did spa night. Ah! I thought I heard my monster in here. Your monster? Yeah, I created him in the basement. What's he doing with all that gunk on his face? We were having a spa night. What? Monsters don't do spa nights? Monsters are supposed to be ferocious and fierce and wreak havoc. He's not that kind of monster. I found him in the woods by the playground. He saved me from bullies, and now there are bullies looking for him. We have to protect our monster. Our monster? I think you mean my monster. He's coming with me. No way. Hey. Uh, uh, uh. Hey, keep it down in there. Quick, hide the monster. What on earth is going on in here? Nothing, Mom. Yep, nothing to see here. Uh -uh. What was that? Oh, my stomach. I don't think that leftover meatloaf sat too well with me, but uh, I'll be okay. <laughs> okay, well, time for bed. Yes, Mom? Okay, Mom. Now. Urgh. Meatloaf! You sure you're okay? Yep. <laughs> Good night. See ya manana. Bye. <laughs> okay. Good night. Phew, that was close. Oh, we can't keep him here. There's no way mom and dad will let us keep a monster. True. But we can't take him outside either. The vigilante bully gang is looking for him. What if they hurt him? But he's a monster. He could just destroy the gang. Easy peasy. You seem to be forgetting that he's not the destructive, dangerous type. He's a big, sweet, softy. Look. <laughs> yeah, I guess he's not gonna wreak any havoc. Hey, I know. Let's take him to Professor Weirdly's house. She'll know what to do. Great idea. Science teachers for the win. <laughs> okay, now how do we get him out of here without attracting attention? Of course. Uh -huh. Perfect. Let's go! So we set out into the night with our monster. It was a little scary, but there's no time to fear when you're on a mission. Super brave, right? Well, that was all about to change. Didn't know it yet, but the vigilante gang was closing in. So all was going according to plan. We were on our way to see Professor Weirdly, the science teacher at our school. She would know what to do with the STEM project gone awry. Okay, cool. I can see Professor Weirdly's house. We're almost there. Is that what I think it is? Yep. What do we do now? Um, we could blast them with a giant water balloon or some of their projectiles. Or we could just cast a protective force field around ourselves. Ooh, or we could sick a giant robot on them. Or we could run. That's always an option. Let's go. What do we have here? Oh, hi, sir. <laughs> nice weather we're having, huh? 
What are you kids doing out here this time of night? Who, us? Yes, you. We're just out for a little evening stroll. And you? I'm out looking for that monster that's been terrorizing the town. Oh, I haven't heard anything about that. Have you, Victor? No, Mary, not a word. A monster, you say? Who's that? Hmm? I said, who's that? Oh, her? Yes, uh, that's our grandma. Yep, <laughs> old granny. But don't bother trying to talk to her. She's hard of hearing. Uh, granny, we're just telling this nice pitchfork-wielding gentleman that you're a little hard of hearing. <laughs> uh, well, I guess it's our bedtime. Good night. Excuse us. Oh, hi guys. We were just leaving. Come on, Granny. <laughs> Seemed too easy, right? We were just gonna walk away, but then suddenly we heard... Meow. <laughs> Come on, Gran. Time for bed. <laughs> yeah, that's a kitty. Let's go. But the monster, being a big old sweetheart, jumped yeah. into the tree to rescue the kitten. Great. Wow, your granny sure is spry. Hey, she saved the kitten. Okay, granny, good job. Now let's go. Uh oh. That's him. That's the monster. Get him. The gang was all riled up, and things were getting very scary. One guy swung his pitchfork up at the monster. Ha! I'll get ya! But he missed. Phew! <laughs> but then it landed. Ah! Hey! You stuck me! And that guy had been waving around a torch, so when he got poked with the pitchfork, he accidentally lit another guy's pants on fire. It was chaos! Finally! We could have just run away at that point, but the monster was such a big old sweetie that he just had to jump down and help. Uh. That's better. Phew. Thanks. Hey, wait, he's being nice. Monsters aren't nice. Well, this one is. He protected me from bullies. He rescued that kitten, and now he's helping you. Yeah, and I created him specifically to be a supervillain, too. I don't know what went wrong. So will you guys leave him alone now? Are you sure he's good? Look at him. Meow. Yeah, okay. We'll let you go. But you all better get home soon. It's late. We know. Just one more stop. Come on, guys. Let's go to Professor Weirdly's. And Victor, you say you made this all by yourself? Yep. Awesome, right? Very impressive! Where will you keep him, Professor? I think he'll be happy at school. He can live in the lab. So from that night on, our monster lived in Professor Weirdly's science lab at the school. It was great. He took care of the class pets. He helped kids with their homework. Well, he tried anyway. He even joined the cheer team. <laughs> He was the best school monster ever, and Victor and I got to see him every day. It was awesome. Yeah, but next time, I'll create a super bad monster that wreaks havoc and mayhem and destruction and, and... Oh boy, here we go. Hi guys, my name is Holly, and I'm gonna tell you about the most epic thing that ever happened to my family, ever. It was this one time I actually met him. You know, the guy in red, St. Nick, Chris Kringle, you probably know him best as Santa Claus. <laughs> so get this, twas the night before Christmas when all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. 
I mean, we were stirring, because we couldn't wait for Christmas morning. This is my kid brother, Gabriel. His favorite day of the year is Christmas, so you can imagine how excited he was. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care, in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. The kids made a lot of preparations for Christmas Eve and for the arrival of Santa. They hung their stockings, they baked cookies, and made a plate for Santa. Don't forget a carrot for Rudolph. They tidied their rooms, they brushed their teeth, they wrapped presents, and finally they said goodnight to their parents. The children were nestled all snug in their beds, while visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. And Mama in her handkerchief, and I in my cap, had just settled in for a long winter's nap. Everyone was sleeping peacefully and anticipating the best morning ever, when out on the lawn there arose such a clatter. I sprang from the bed to see what was the matter. Away to the window, I flew like a flash, tore open the shutters, and threw up the sash! Whoa, what happened? It's freezing! I heard something coming from outside. Take a look. The moon on the breast of the new fallen snow gave the luster of midday to objects below. Gabe, look over there! When what to my wondering eyes should appear but a miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer! Whoa! I always knew reindeer existed! I just knew it! With a little old driver, so lively and quick, I knew in a moment it must be Saint Nick! I can't believe this is actually happening! Santa Claus is coming to our house! No one at school is gonna believe me when I tell them! Look! Look at the reindeer! They're so... so... magical! The reindeer and sleigh got closer and closer to the kid's house. More rapid than eagles, his coursers they came, and he whistled and shouted and called them by name. Ho, ho, ho! Now Dasher and Dancer, now Prancer and Vixen, on Comet, on Cupid, on Donder, on Blitzen, to the top of the porch, to the top of the wall. Now dash away, dash away, dash away all! Ho, ho, ho! As dry leaves that before the wild hurricane fly, when they meet with an obstacle, mount to the sky. So up to the housetop the coursers they flew, with a sleigh full of toys and St. Nicholas too. He's here, you guys, he's really here. And then in a twinkling, I heard on the roof the prancing and pawing of each little hoof. The reindeer must be so tired from going to so many kids' houses tonight. Yeah, I hope they like the carrots we left them. Maybe they will want some hot chocolate? Maybe. Let's go downstairs. I think I hear a rustling in the chimney. As I drew in my head and was turning around, down the chimney, St. Nicholas came with a bound. So Gabe and Holly were waiting by the chimney as good old St. Nick barreled down towards them. I see his boots. I see his bag full of gifts. And like that, Santa popped down the chimney and the kids got to see him in real life. He was dressed all in fur from his head to his foot and his clothes were all tarnished with ashes and soot. I can't believe it. It's actually really, really him. Look, a bundle of toys he had flung on his back and he looked like a peddler just opening his pack. He was even more magical looking than they imagined. His eyes, how they twinkled. His dimples, how merry. His cheeks were like roses. His nose, like a cherry. His droll little mouth was drawn up like a bow, and the beard of his chin was as white as the snow. Do you think he has the art supplies I wanted in there? I really hope he has the science kit I asked for. <laughs> While the kids wondered about their gifts, Santa took a look around with a smile. Look, Gabe, I think he likes the note that you left him. He's laughing. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> he had a broad face and a round little belly that shook when he laughed like a bowl full of jelly. Yeah, it was Def the reindeer joke that did it. I mean, come on, a reindeer walks into an ice cream bar? Yeah, yeah, Gabe, we all know that joke. You've told it like a hundred times. Meanwhile, Santa was making his way around the room, smiling at family pictures, filling stockings, and warming himself by the fire. He was chubby and plump, a right jolly old elf. And I laughed when I saw him in spite of myself. Hey Santa, welcome to our house. We hope you're having a magical night. Whoa, he sees us. I hope we aren't in trouble. But a wink of his eye and a twist of his head soon gave me to know I had nothing to dread. Shh, 
He's unloading the presents. He spoke not a word, but went straight to work and filled all the stockings, then turned with a jerk. And after Santa was done with all the presents, things got a little silly. He took off his boots and sat by the fire to rest. We didn't want him to miss out on our awesome Christmas cookies, so... Here you go, sir, or, er, um, Santa, um, St. Nick. Hello there, kids. Why, thank you so much. I made the green Christmas tree ones. They're lemon flavored. Mmm, these are delicious. The best cookies I've had tonight. Although I was in Italy and had some of the most delicious biscotti. Oh, 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 that was a Christmas treat. Whoa, that is so cool. And then in Holland, I had these scrumptious cookies called speculoos. Mmm, I wish we could go on a Christmas cookie world tour. Sounds like a sweet dream. <laughs> Oh, do you want to play a game with us? It's our Christmas Eve tradition to play pin the tail on the reindeer. Well, it's not a real reindeer, just a paper one. They decorated a gingerbread house. They wrapped gifts for their presents. They drank hot cocoa. They played dreidel. They listened to Santa tell stories from the North Pole. Finally, the kids started to feel really tired. It was the middle of the night, after all. Ho, ho, ho! Well, this was so much fun, kids! But I should get going. I have so many houses to visit before morning. Yeah, we should get to bed. Thank you so much, Santa. See you same time, same place next year. Sure, just keep yourself on the nice list and not that naughty one. Ho, 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 ho! Then you'll see me again next year. Say hi to Mrs. Claus for us. Will do. And laying his finger aside of his nose and giving a nod up the chimney, he rose. Come on, let's go look out the window. Hi, Rudolph. He sprang to his sleigh to his team, gave a whistle, and away they all flew like a down of a thistle. See you next year, Santa. Then I won't even bother my sister. I'll be well behaved, I promise. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <laughs> I heard him exclaim ere he drove out of sight, Happy, Happy Christmas, Christmas to all and to all a good night. We really need to get back to the yellow brick road. But maybe just a little nappy wappy voiced. Yeah, <sighs> nighty night. <sighs> That's right, go to sleep, Dorothy. Now, time for Mama to get some new shoes. <laughs> Okay, let's try this again. Meow. Must be having a nightmare, scaredy cat. Okay, back to the shoes. Ha, they're mine. Wait a second. They're stuck. The witch pulled with all her might, but she could not remove the shoes. They must be protected by magic. Well, I also have magic and my flying monkeys. The Wicked Witch of the West summoned her flying monkeys. What's up, boss? Take this girl to my castle. Aye, aye. <laughs> Sleep tight, boys. When you wake, your little friend Dorothy will be long gone, and the sapphire slippers will be mine. All mine! <laughs> Once the flying monkeys had carried Dorothy away from the poppies, the flower's power wore off, and Dorothy woke up. <laughs> this frightened the monkeys. <laughs> and they promptly dropped Dorothy to the ground below. Okay, that was scary. But look, come back on the yellow brick road. But what about my friends? If I go back for them, the poppies will make me fall asleep forever. What to do? Dorothy thought and thought, but she couldn't come up with a solution. Until, wait a second. These shoes are supposed to be magical. And the good witch supposedly blessed me with some kind of magic. I must be able to do something. Hmm. Dorothy tried to get her magic shoes to come up with something magic. She tapped them together. She tried doing a dance routine. She tried saying some magic sounding words. Ta-da! Abracadabra! Kazam! But nothing seemed to work. It's useless. What is? Who said that? I did, down here. Oh, hi. <laughs> you seemed upset just now. Anything I can do to help? 
I don't think so. My friends and I are supposed to go see the Wizard of Oz, but we fell asleep in that field of poppies over there. But then I woke up and these flying monkeys were carrying me away. I screamed and they dropped me. And here I am. Flying monkeys, eh? They work for the Wicked Witch of the West. Oh no. But it's a good thing you got out. The poppies are very dangerous. Your friends will sleep forever if we don't save them. But how do we do that? The other mice and I can go get them. We've lived here forever and the poppies don't bother us. But my friends are way too big for mice to carry. They may be too much for one mouse alone, but the whole crew, piece of cake. The mouse squeaked out a call to the other mice and soon there were hundreds of mice gathering around Dorothy. You wait here, we'll be back in a sec. And the mice scurried off into the field of poppies. Dorothy waited and soon she saw her friends, still in a deep sleep, being carried across the flowers. You should have warned us that one of your friends is a scary lion! Oh, he's not that scary at all. Watch! <laughs> Eek! Mouse! See? What's going on? We all fell asleep in the field of poppies, and then the wicked witch's flying monkeys took me. But then I fell down here, and these lovely mice helped save you. How kind! And look, we're so close to the Emerald City! Let's go! Bye bye, mouse friends. Thanks again for helping us. Anytime. Goodbye. And once again, Dorothy and her friends were off to see the wonderful Wizard of Oz. Dorothy and the gang skipped along the yellow brick road, and before long, they saw it <gasps> the Emerald City. Wow. Let's go. Hello. Yes. We're here to see the wizard. And why, may I ask? Because I want a brain. And I a heart. I want courage. And I want to go home to Kansas. Hold, please. Mm -hmm. Yes? Oh, okay. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, I see. Hmm. <laughs> oh, very well. Okay, goodbye. The wizard will see you. Wonderful! Yes, he is. Right this way. Dorothy and the gang were led through the all-green, very sparkly, emerald-laden city. Wow! Pretty! I find this green very soothing. You first. Wish me luck. Hello? What do you want? Hi, sir. I want to ask you, please, if you will help me return home. Where is home? Kansas, sir. Oh, you don't say. Oh, have you been there? <clears throat> and why should I grant you this request? Because you're wonderful, and everyone says so. Even the good witch of the North said so. She did? I mean, how do you know her? Oh, I met her in the Munchkin Land. See, I landed in Oz rather accidentally. My house, it got swept up in a tornado, and I... It landed on the Wicked Witch of the East, and it squished her. Long story short, everybody told me to come here and that you could help me get home to Kansas. So, will you help me? You squish the Wicked Witch? Yes. I will help you get home. You will? Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you! But, you must do something first. Anything. Your wish is my command. You must defeat the Wicked Witch of the West. Hold up, what? You squish the Wicked Witch of the East. Now go squish the Wicked Witch of the West. But I didn't mean to hurt the first witch. That was an accident. I couldn't hurt anyone on purpose. Not even a Wicked Witch. Then I cannot help you. Next. Dorothy was devastated. She went out to the others and tried to hide her disappointment. How did it go? It was interesting. Good luck in there, Scarecrow. But the Scarecrow went in and came out just as disappointed as Dorothy. Then the Tin Man, then the Lion. Turns out they all got the same answer. Unless they defeated the Wicked Witch of the West, the wizard would not help them. I'll never get a brain. I'll never have a heart. I'll never get courage. And I'll never see Aunt Em or Uncle Henry or Kansas ever again. <laughs> What's wrong? The wizard told us he can't help us unless we go squish the Wicked Witch of the West. <laughs> Oof, scary. Well, good luck. Well, we're not gonna do it. Come on, guys, let's go. Where to? I don't know. Maybe we can go look for the Good Witch of the North. Maybe she'll help us. But when Dorothy and her friends left the Emerald City, they were in for a surprise. <laughs> oh, Dorothy! 
The Wicked Witch of the West? Run! But the Wicked Witch was too fast for them. Her flying monkeys swooped in and snatched up the whole gang. Take that scarecrow and scatter his straw around until he's just a pile of clothes. And put that tin man in the recycling bin. Put the lion in a cage and sell him to the zoo. What about her? Take Dorothy to my castle. I'll take care of her. <laughs> now fly, monkeys, fly! Uh-oh, kids. This does not look good. The Wicked Witch of the West had ordered the flying monkeys to carry Dorothy and her friends to different locations. The Tin Man was to be put in the recycling bin, the Scarecrow pulled into pieces, and the Lion locked away and sold to the zoo. Dorothy's fate was to be delivered to the Witch's Castle, a visit she was not looking forward to. Hey, guys, how about just dropping me off here? I'll, I'll run along and I'll never bother the Wicked Witch again. No way. Yeah, sorry, kid. You do not want to make the Wicked Witch angry. Yeah, I guess you're right. But the good news is we won't hurt you. Okay, good to know. Thanks, but why? You wear the sapphire slippers. They're magic. Yeah, I heard that, but they haven't done anything magical so far. Well, you better watch out. The witch is definitely going to try to take those. The flying monkeys were right. The Wicked Witch of the West wanted nothing more than to get those sapphire slippers from Dorothy. When she arrived at the witch's castle, Dorothy was forced to do chores. And all the while, the witch watched, just waiting to take the shoes. Gotta get those shoes. Don't you want to change before you sweep up all that garbage? You'll get your shoes dirty. I'm okay, thanks. Oh, that floor is going to get slippery. Don't you think you should wear some less slippery shoes? Get it? Because they're slippers? But seriously, get me the shoes! I got it. Good one. But no, I'm okay in these shoes. Jeez, she really wants these shoes. And why is this castle so dirty? Ew. The witch waited and waited, but the only time Dorothy ever removed her slippers was when she took a bath. But the wicked witch was dreadfully afraid of water, so she never dare tried to steal them during bath time. I guess I'll just have to wait a little longer. Drat! Then one day, the witch's wait was finally over. Dorothy was dusting a super high shelf when one of her slippers slipped right off. I got it! <laughs> it's mine! It's mine! Now give me the other one! Give me! No, you give me! You're powerless with only one shoe! So are you! Give it! No! Come on! Stop it! Ah! Now look what you've done! What's another mess? You make me clean all day anyway. Not that. I'm melting! Say what now? I'm melting! You melted me! You knew I couldn't touch water! I thought you were just afraid of it. Now you've destroyed me just like you destroyed my sister! You're a terrible girl! You're a bad, no good, stinking... Blah, 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 blah. But the witch melted before she could get out the last insult. Oh, I guess that's why she hated water. Who would have thunk it? Suddenly, Dorothy heard a familiar sound. It was a clanking of metal, a kind of swooshing sound, followed by a ferocious roar. Hey guys, how did you get here? I thought I'd never see you again. No time to explain now. We have to rescue you from the Wicked Witch. Come on. Thanks, but it's all good. She melted. <laughs> uh? huh? I'll explain later, too. Let's go see the wizard! Oh yeah! Now he'll grant our wishes! Hooray! Hooray! The gang set out on their journey back to the Emerald City. The Scarecrow would get his brains, the Tin Man would get his heart, the Cowardly Lion would get his courage, and Dorothy and Toto would finally go back home to Kansas. And when they arrived, the wizard did not seem happy to see them. What are you doing here? I told you not to come back until you destroyed the Wicked Witch. And we have your greatness. This is not a joke. I know, she's gone. Dorothy melted her. Accidentally, but yeah, she's gone. <laughs> so we've come back so you can grant our wishes. Oh, I forgot to say please. Please, sir. <laughs> I cannot grant your wishes. Now go away. Wait, what? What do you mean you can't grant our wishes? So I can't go home to Kansas? <laughs> I won't get a brain. I won't get a heart. I won't get any courage. This is bull.
baloney! You're supposed to be some wise and wonderful wizard! You're a charlatan! A humbug! Where are you? If you won't give me courage, then at least get some for yourself and come out and face us! Who are you? The wizard? So you're the mighty and wonderful Wizard of Oz? Well, I'm actually from Omaha, Nebraska. See, I landed here accidentally some years ago, and I somehow convinced everyone that I was a wizard, and, well, here we are. So, you're not a wizard. So, you don't have any power. Um, no, not at all. Then we came all this way and did all of this for nothing? But you did destroy the Wicked Witch. That's a pretty big deal. How did you do it? Dorothy and the gang explained how it all went down. First, of course, they had been captured by the flying monkeys. The scarecrow had been pulled apart and scattered in a field. He lay in pieces when he suddenly had a bright idea. He knew that crows are pretty clever, so he called out and asked them to help put him back together, and they did. Once he was back to his old self, the scarecrow went to find the Tin Man. The Tin Man had been sold for scrap at a salvage yard and was feeling sadder than ever. But the Scarecrow put him back together, polished him up, cause he had rusted quite a bit from crying. And they set off to find the lion. The lion had been locked up in a tiny cage and sold to the zoo. It was not a nice zoo at all. It was gloomy and full of terrible creatures like Kalinas. Remember those? Very scary. Not a good place for a lion with no courage. There, the Scarecrow had another bright idea. He asked the Tin Man to use a bit of his metal to pick open the lock on the cage. And then, the lion was free! It was time to save Dorothy. But first, the Tin Man stopped to unlock each and every cage because it made him too sad to see any creature locked up, even Kalita's. The Scarecrow, the Tin Man, and the Lion headed toward the Wicked Witch's castle. They were all very scared, especially when the flying monkeys saw them and swooped in. But the Lion put on his brave face and roared, making all the monkeys fly away shrieking. He was ready to take on the Wicked Witch too, but when they got inside the castle, they found Dorothy had already melted her. And so, there you have it. That's how we defeated the Wicked Witch. Too bad it was all for nothing. That's not true. You've saved everyone in Oz from the Wicked Witch. You'll be celebrated here forever, Dorothy. You'll be a star. But I just want to go home. And I want a brain. I want my heart. And I want my courage. Scarecrow, you already have brains. How else could you have figured out how to put yourself and the Tin Man back together? It was your idea how to pick the lock on the cage, too. Hey, yeah. Well, I guess it was. See? You've had brains the whole time. And you, Tin Man. You've shown you have a heart. You freed all the animals in the zoo. Well, they looked unhappy. I wanted to help. That's heart. And Lion, you showed bravery when you stormed the witch's castle. And you certainly seemed brave a moment ago when you were roaring at me. Oh yeah, sorry about that. No worries. But don't you guys see? You've had what you were looking for the whole time. But what about Dorothy? Hmm, Dorothy. Let's see what we can do. Hey, what about the magic shoes? Dorothy, can you use them to get home? Magic shoes? You've got the sapphire slippers? That makes you the most powerful person in Oz. Do you know how to use them? Mm, nope, no idea. I'll bet the good witch knows. Scarecrow, you're really on a roll here with all the brain stuff. That's a great idea. So the wizard sent out a call to the good witch of the north. Dorothy, my dear, how are you? I'm so glad you made it to the Emerald City to see the great and powerful wizard. Yeah, about that. We'll chat later, but now we need to get this girl home to Kansas. And we were thinking... I was thinking... I do that now. Yes, the Scarecrow was thinking you would know how to use the magic of the Sapphire Slippers to get home. So do you? Oh yes, it's quite simple. Take three steps in the Sapphire Shoes and say your wish. And then I'll be home. And then you'll be home. What? It's that easy? <laughs> Wait! You have to say goodbye first! Oh, right. I almost forgot that I would never see you again. Oh, wow. <laughs> Don't! You'll rust! Tin Man, I'll never forget how kind you are. You have a wonderful heart. <laughs> Thank you, Dorothy! <laughs> Someone better get his oil can. Lion, 
You're braver and fiercer than any Kalita in the whole land of Oz. Thank you for protecting us on our journey. Oh shucks, Dorothy. I'll miss ya. I'll even miss your terrifying dog, Toto. <laughs> Be nice, Toto. <laughs> Scarecrow, you've been with me the longest. I don't think we would have made it without your quick thinking. I think you're the real wizard here. Oh, Dorothy, do you have to go? I do. I miss my family and my house and... Hey, wait a sec. My house is in Munchkinland. Huh. I wonder where Auntie Em and Uncle Henry live now. Well, I better go. I love you guys and I'll miss you. Come on, Toto. <gasps> we'll miss you. We love you. Bye, Dorothy. Dorothy took three steps and said, take me home to Kansas. And in a flash, Dorothy and Toto were back in Kansas. It was more colorful than she had remembered, but maybe that's just because Dorothy was so happy to be home. Hi kids, Miss Booksy here with a Cool School exclusive. Today, I'm going to interview a real witch. <laughs> Super scary, huh? I mean, witches are always flying around on broomsticks and casting spells and being wicked, right? <laughs> well, we'll see. Help me welcome to the stage, the one, the only. Oh, I realize I don't know her real name, so come on out, witch! Hey, how are you? Happy to be here. Hi there, so what is your name? Alfred Boogers. Wow, that's beautiful. <laughs> so tell me, how did you first become a witch? Were you born a witch? Did you go to a school for wizards and witchcraft? Ooh, do you play Quidditch? I was born into a family of witches. My mother was a witch, my mother's mother was a witch, and my mother's mother's mother was a witch. What about your mother's 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 mother? Was she a witch? No, she was an accountant. Oh, <laughs> so what was your first spell? I turned the family cat into a chihuahua. What? I'm a dog person. Interesting. I always thought witches like cats. That's just a stereotype. Anyway, my spells got really good when I got my first bubbly cauldron. Ooh, tell me about that. What was the first thing you cooked up in your cauldron? First thing was chili. I make excellent chili. Award winning. Spicy but not too spicy. Light on the beans. Oh, okay. But what kind of spells did you first cook up? Oh, right. Let's see. Uh, one time I put in the hair of a yeti, the fingernail of a meerkat, one lizard's tongue, a dash of cinnamon, and the eye of a newt. And what did that do? Made my entire kindergarten class levitate. You kids get back down here this minute or I'm calling the principal. That sounds fun. Want me to levitate you? Are you serious? Um, yes please. <laughs> do you have a bubbling cauldron? I have a crock pot. Eh, it's okay. I can just use my wand. Abracadabra! Oh, this is so cool! <laughs> oh, hey, you have some schmutz on your hat. Oh, thanks. Hey, how do I get down? Hocus pocus. Ow! Whew. Sorry about that. The landing is the hardest part. <laughs> so, most people think of witches as wicked villains, but you actually weren't the bad guy in Snow White. Yeah, the evil queen was the villain there. I mean, her name is Evil Queen. What do you expect? Have you ever done anything truly wicked? Hmm, one time I cut the line at Disney World. For which ride? It was the line for the Bippity Boppity Boutique. Ooh, that is wicked. But I was such a cute princess. Fair enough, everyone deserves a princess moment. Exactly. Just one more question before you go. Is it annoying when people dress up as witches for Halloween? Not at all, I love it. Imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, you know. Plus, I blend right in and go trick-or-treating. Witches love candy, by the way. You can quote me on that. Alrighty, well, there you have it, kids. Witches love candy and dressing up as princesses. Who knew? Hi, boys and girls. Welcome back to Cool School. It's the holiday season, and you know what that means. Decorations, yummy treats, presents, and the man who makes it all happen is here today. No, it's not your dad. It's Santa Claus. I'm going to be interviewing him today and asking him all of your burning questions. Let's get started. Here he is, the man in red, St. Nick, Chris Kringle, the king of the North Pole, Santa Claus! Ho, ho, ho. Oh, ho, there, boys and girls. Hi, Miss Booksy. I am so happy to see you. Me too. I have to tell you something, Miss Booksy. You're always on the nice list. Really? Well, I try really hard, so I'm glad it's working. You've been on the good list since you were a little girl. Yay. <laughs> 
Okay, first up, I need to ask you, how many elves do you have working for you? Oof, well, I hire about 5,000 new elves every year. The number just keeps going up and up. So many toys to be made. Wow, so you have a lot of help. Oh, yes. I wouldn't be able to do everything I do without my elves. And of course, the help of some good old hot chocolate. Ooh, I love hot chocolate. Hey, that reminds me, hot chocolate break. <sighs> oh, oh. Ooh, that was great. So Santa, we have some questions from the audience. Do you mind? Oh, of course not. I always try to answer questions on my Instagram, hashtag technology. Cool. Okay, Christina asks, do Santa and Mrs. Claus give each other presents? That is a great question. We like to give each other homemade gifts. So sometimes a handmade card, or even a drawing, or even my favorite, apple pie. How creative. You know, Miss Booksy, you don't need money to give a gift either. Sometimes just going and playing a game with someone after school is a gift of your time. Oh, that's so sweet and so true. Sometimes me and my BFF, Crafty Carol, just make slime together. Ho, 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 I love slime, but it's always getting stuck on my furry clothes and the reindeer's antlers. Yeah, slime can be a real mess, <laughs> but really fun. Okay, Z Family asks, does Santa feed his reindeer candy canes for them to fly? Or maybe you feed them some coffee so they get really hyper and fly? Oh, oh man, I gave the reindeer coffee one year. I'll never do that again. Wow! Whoa, that must have been crazy. <laughs> okay, I have my own question for you. What is your favorite holiday song? Oh, well, I listen to holiday music all year to stay in the spirit, but I really love Jingle Bells because it's about riding in a sleigh, dashing through the snow in a one-horse open sleigh. Over the fields we go, laughing all the way. <laughs> <laughs> also, I love Deck the Halls with Bells of Holly. Fa -la, 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 la 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 la, tis the season to be jolly. Fa la 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 la. <laughs> I love singing with friends, don't you kids? Singing carols is the best. <laughs> and I think the question that everyone wants to know is, how do you get to every kid's house in the whole world to drop off presents in just one night? Well, I can't really reveal my secrets, but it's the magic of the season that makes it possible. Come on, can't you just spoil a little bit of the secret? Well, I really shouldn't say this because I don't want to give it all away, but there is one person who makes it all happen. Really? Okay, listen up, you hardworking elves. We have a very busy season ahead of us. Evergreen, you start with the dollhouses. Get it! Sparkles, you get a big group together and start assembling bicycles. Yes, ma'am! Snowflake, you're so good at art, so you can start painting toy soldiers. Aw, oh, thank you so much for that job, boss. I love it. I love Christmas. I love toys. I love the North Pole. Snowflake. Oops, sorry, just got excited. And the rest of you, help wherever you can. And don't forget to take a cookie and apple cider break every 15 minutes. What? Who did you think got everything done around here? Whoa. I mean, I guess they always say next to every successful man is a strong and smart woman. I want to meet Mrs. Claus. You go, girl. Ah, uh, Mrs. Claus. Ho, oh, oh, ho, yup, she really is the best. Well, we're almost out of time, Santa. But I don't know if you've watched my other interviews, but we usually have a dance party with all of our guests. Oh, that's really my favorite thing to do, to stretch out the old muscles after sitting in that sleigh for so long. Let's do it! Ho, ho, ho! <laughs> Woo! Okay, that was fun. <laughs> but it's almost time to say goodbye. No! Well, I guess I do have to get back to work. The big night is coming. 
thank you so much for joining us, Santa. Kids, let us know in the comments below if you have more questions for Santa and who else you want me to interview. Ho, 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 and don't forget to subscribe to Cool School so you'll never miss a video. I subscribe. Aw, thanks. <laughs> and we wish you all a very happy holiday season. May it be filled with family, food, and lots of fun. Ho, 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 ho. See you soon, guys. Bye. Hi, girls and boys. It's me, Miss Booksy, and welcome back to Cool School. Today is such an exciting day because we are celebrating my birthday. <laughs> We've told you guys before that my birthday is in January, and here it is. It's January, my birthday month. <laughs> Does anyone else out there celebrate their birthday for a whole month? It's just so much fun. Why not? <laughs> So first of all, what does January even mean? Well, according to my research, one of the original Roman meanings of the word is wolf month. Whoa. <laughs> Who, me? Ah! Oh, whoa, okay, no biggie. <laughs> I know this guy, he's not as bad as you think. Happy birthday, Miss Booksy. I hope this year is your favorite one. Thanks, Wolf, peace out. So January obviously starts with New Year's Day. The very first day of the year. <laughs> Lots of people like to make resolutions on New Year's. A resolution is basically something you're gonna try really hard to do. <laughs> like some people like to eat healthier, or try something new, or spend time with their family. <laughs> it's always good to have goals and try to achieve them, am I right? <laughs> hmm, one of my goals this year is to read even more books. <laughs> Maybe you guys can join me. Let me know in the comments below what books you plan on reading this year. Any suggestions for me? Ooh, and maybe one more goal is to do more videos with Crafty Carol, <laughs> cause duh, she's the best. <laughs> Let me know in the comments below what videos you want me and Carol to do together. Don't forget to send us fan mail. We always read them and sometimes even on our videos, like when we do Facebook Live, we love it. Did you guys know that every month of the year has its own birthstone? Yeah, it's really cool. January's birthstone is garnet, which is really just a fancy word for dark red. <laughs> like this. Ooh, pretty. Maybe someone will get me a garnet ring for my birthday. Eh, eh, you know what? I'd be fine with a garnet colored lollipop. Some of you guys asked me what my all time favorite birthday party I ever had was. Well, it was a year long ago. I had this totally awesome birthday party at a zoo. That's right, kids, a zoo. <laughs> we went to the discovery area where you can actually pet the animals. I went on a donkey ride. My friends and I ate ice cream and animal crackers. <laughs> we got balloon animals made for us. It was awesome. What was your favorite birthday party you ever had? It could be something like the zoo, or maybe it was just one time you were home with your family eating cake. And I know all of you are gonna be asking me how old I'm turning this year. Well, the number is here in this envelope. Uh -oh. oh my, that is a higher number than I thought. So kids, I, uh, we're just gonna put that away for now. So maybe I'll check again next year. <laughs> how old are you? Let me know in the comments below. We love hearing from you guys. Aw, you guys, look, I got a birthday card. I wonder who it's from. Dear Miss Booksy, happy birthday. You are a super great storyteller. I love reading along with you. I hope your birthday is totally awesome and that you have the bestest year of all. See you soon. Love, Drew Pendus. Aw, that was so sweet, you guys. Don't you just love getting birthday cards? I'm gonna save this forever and ever. I wonder who that could be. Oh! Look who it is, you guys! Hi, guys! Happy <laughs> Carol here, oh. and um, happy birthday to my best friend, Miss Lexi! Thank you so much, Chucks. Now, I know you've been asking for a very special present from me for a long time, and today, I have it for you. Finally! <laughs> okay, I'm gonna open it. I'm so excited. I, I know what this is. Oh, 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 oh my special box. The box. It's a ham sandwich. <laughs> they put mustard on it in the cafeteria, and I don't like mustard, so happy birthday. Oh, thank you, Carol. It's just exactly what I always wanted. It's good, right? Mm -hmm. You love it? I love it. Am I your favorite friend in the world? Yeah. I'm just joking. Yeah. Ah. It's not your birthday present. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Yeah. Try that one up. Finally. Finally. Yeah. Oh. Wow. Surprise! Happy birthday. This is great. 
I definitely I love like, it. I Thank you so much for that. One more for you. Ooh. Open it up, open the it up. wrapping is so beautiful. Mm. Oh! Wow! <laughs> Guys, I really don't want to seem ungrateful to Carol for these presents. She's the best. And of course, I love this picture of her, but like, I've been saying I've been wanting a birthday box for like ages. Do you think I'm finally gonna get one? Okay, I can't take it anymore. I'm your BFF, and I know what you really want for your birthday. This was all a joke. Oh, but I still like it though. <laughs> Ta-da! very own. Guys, open it up. It's my very own birthday box! <laughs> I'm so excited, all the things are here, yay! Can we make this slime now, please, please, pretty please? Of course! We're gonna mix it up with this! <laughs> oh. <laughs> A little bit of extra confetti. Soda, Baking soda. Solution. Contact solution. And a starting stick, of course. Can, Can you ready? Can I pour it? Go for it! This might be the yes. biggest batch of slime we've ever made! Oh, yeah. Ooh, you see that glue bubble? Activate slime. Oh, oh, there it goes. Oh, <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and add some of this. Is purple okay? Love it, one of my favorite colors. I think we need both of us to stir. Ooh. Ah! Ooh, I've been slimed. Oh. Do you want a birthday no. hat? Okay, I'm gonna add my birthday. Okay, let's go for it. Yeah. This is becoming the best birthday ever! Happy birthday to you! Oh. Happy birthday, baby! Happy birthday to you! Yeah. Make a wish! Okay, okay! Yeah. Oh, I'm so excited! Was it, good? it was really good, but it's gotta be a secret! Shh. Okay. Shh. Otherwise it won't come true! Ready? In three, two, one! to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, this cake is so good. Mm -hmm. And kids, make sure you tune in tomorrow for a special Facebook Live mm -hmm. surprise birthday party for Miss Boxy. So thank you guys so much for watching and subscribe because mm -hmm. soon we're gonna need to celebrate Carol's birthday. Mm -hmm. See if you can guess in the comments below what month Carol's birthday is in because we're gonna have to do a crafty Carol celebration. So that's it. See you next time. Bye. Bye. Write happy birthday in the comments. Tell us, Pussy, happy birthday. Thank you. Bye. See ya.